the third installment in our series on the Constitutional Convention story. As these gentlemen rode back in their carriages and throughout the rest of the weekend, they had a lot to think about. Most of them and their colleagues who had not accompanied them on the trip were sure the Connecticut plan would be defeated. The issue with the Connecticut plan that had given rise to the Connecticut plan had to do with voting power amongst the states. The large states wanted voting power to be driven by population. So the more you, population you had, the more voting power you had. But this then meant that the large states would always control what laws were written and approved within the government. And the small states did not want that. The small states wanted there to be a government based on one state, one vote. The large states felt that this was terribly unfair to them. And so the arguments had continued and continued and continued. And most believed that by the time Monday was over, there would be no constitution, there would be no agreement, and there would be no nation known as the United States of America. Of the 55 delegates, the youngest was 26, and the oldest was Ben Franklin himself at 81. Ben Franklin had begun to despair greatly that the country was never going to come together. And he wrote about it in his diaries, and he spoke about it to his friends and acquaintances. If we can't agree on this, we are not fit to become a nation. That paraphrases the sentiment that he shared with so many people. So, come Monday morning, the morning dawned crisp and clear and cool. The heat wave was completely gone and the summer had cooled off delightfully so. Though the temperature had cooled, the temperament of the individuals in that room had not. And as they walked into that chamber, there was nothing but dread for most of them.